Thank you, David. Uh, good morning. Uh, firstly, can I thank uh, Joe Mulholland for asking me to contribute at this year's McGill Summer School. Uh, the last time I spoke uh, was on a panel with Alan Dukes. Uh, we were discussing whether there should be a second constitutional referendum to ratify a European Union treaty. It's good to see that we've moved on. Uh, I, I'm, I'm also glad uh, to come to Glen Tees at any time because uh, it's not too far away from where my father is from uh, and over the next couple of days I'll have the opportunity of joining my mother and my sister and their families on Aranmore Island uh, probably for the first time since he passed away a number of years ago. Uh, my father was a man of character uh, and uh, while I suspect he, he might admire my temerity with some of the things I say and some of the things I might be saying today. He, he would also shake his head sagely, I suspect, uh, and accuse me of tilting at windmills, uh, because banks to him were organizations that wrote their own rules. And rules were something that applied to him and to our like, but could be avoided by people with the means and resources to do so. And I don't think we've moved that far away from that culture. Uh, among the many changes in economic and social and political life that have occurred in Ireland in the past 30 years, Bankers have seemed more immune in protecting their place in the establishment's pecking order. Some of the lapses that have taken place uh, have been glossed over or have been easily explained. The ICI debacle of the 1980s was thought to be about more uh, of individual competencies than any type of collective responsibility. The dirt scandal of the 1990s was certainly an act of mass collusion within the Irish banking sector but it was a conspiracy shared, shared by a large number of Irish citizens, so blame was diffuse. Under cer similar circumstances, the current crisis in financial services could have been attributed to international factors. But the folly exposed has been too deep and the greed and gender uh, too incredible for citizens to continue to accept. The questions that now remain uh, are, are what is the price tag that the, price, that the taxpayer is expected to pick up? How were things ever allowed to get this far? And when will those who have individually contributed to this state of affairs take responsibility and be held accountable? We live in a small country. Many people know so many other people. There has been a historical cultural reluctance to challenge in this country. In this context, an effective system of regulation will always prove less effective than in a more standards-based country. Add to this the conceit the impression that, the, that banking was an honor-based profession where standards would be set but would rarely be measured, then little surprise should exist that the seeds of not knowing and not acting were allowed to spread so widely. Even in the simpler times of the past, when a traditional central bank was responsible for money supply and for interest rates, the conservative nature of Irish banking meant that reserves and lending ratios were easily adhered to. Later, as gentlemen agreements regulation gave way to large-scale deregulation and Irish banks engaged in expansion policies in foreign markets, new questions arose, uh, many of which remain unanswered. What was to be regulated, how, by whom and where, uh, allowed huge gaps to be opened up that were ruthlessly exploited. Even in transnational regions such as uh, within the Eurozone, uh, this created a charter that was more concerned with quick profit return than maintaining proper standards of financial regulation. The turn of the millennium saw a flurry of activity in changing national uh, approaches to financial regulatory systems. In Ireland, this process was informed by the commissioning of the McDowell Report. It was, an, it was an irony that subsequently Michael McDowell was to become a member of the cabinet that selectively acted on the recommendations of his group's report. The legislation which followed uh, recast the role of the central bank and brought into being the Irish Financial Services Regulatory Authority. As opposition uh, spokesperson in the Doyle at the time, uh, I, I spoke on this legislation uh, and it would have been hard not to have been aware of the turf war uh, that existed. Then was the time to reimagine the central bank. Having entered into the uh, euro currency, many of the intrinsic functions of the bank disappeared at a stroke. The then government, represented through the Minister of Finance, Charlie McCreevy, felt that a new Irish Financial Services Regulatory Authority would bring a new, bolder approach to regulation. It's hard to imagine uh, that argument now uh, and not keep a straight face. A secondary debate was about the role of consumer protection uh, in the newly established IFSRA. It was important that it was included. Uh, it's important that it included in any new system of financial regulation to be determined now. Consumer protection is the canary in the coal mine approach towards financial regulation. 
Abuse of consumer rights uh, can often be indicative of lax financial standards within an institution. An argument has been advanced that the need to concentrate on consumer pr protection has been at the expense of the potential role of a regulatory authority. I find this to be a hollow argument, a convenient excuse for the failure not to meet the prudential function. These are coexistent parallel functions. One does not exist at the uh, expense of the other. The legislation that established ISRA was not deficient in the powers that were made available to the new agencies. The greatest failings of the inability to regulate uh, in recent years has not been because uh, of the lack of resources or negligence in legislation. It has been the decisions not to activate many of the powers available to the regulatory authority. Of course, there have been other factors. Because of the incestuous nature uh, of recruitment in financial services, the same pool of likely employees has existed from which financial institutions and the regulatory authorities have dipped into. Higher wages in the private sector deprive st uh, state bodies from recruiting all but the highly, most highly motivated of people. The high turnover of staff in ISRA uh, would indicate a high level of transfer from ISRA to other financial institutions, a practice that could be seen as buying off the expertise developing within the regulatory authority. There was a, mi a mirror practice within ISRA where uh, ISRA sought to encourage uh, work experience to employees from financial institutions. It happened on a far smaller scale and does not seem to have delivered on its intention of increasing expertise within financial institutions of the importance of regulation. I feel that it is important that in any new system of financial regulation uh, that cooling off periods be provided for to discourage the active recruitment of regulatory authority personnel within a set time period of them leaving employment of a regulator. It could be that just as it has been applied to the debate on uh, the deterioration in public finances, that the science of hindsight can be a great thing. Prior to the collapse in major international banks, uh, there seemed little discussion that Irish banks were benefiting from the existence of lax regulation, or that IFSRA was failing in its responsibility. However, uh, as an opposition finance spokesperson, along with my colleagues Eamon Ryan, the then Green Party spokesperson on enterprise and employment, and our former party leader, Trevor Sargent, Together we have had a series of meetings with banking leaders at that time that revealed to us the sense of hubris that, ex uh, that surrounded Irish banking. In, in advance of the 2007 general election, Eamon and I had a number of meetings with the Irish Banking Federation. At these meetings we expressed our concerns at several of the goods and services being offered by Irish banks, 100 and 110% loans being offered to customers without reference to past lending standards. Uh, loans that would only end up in pump priming an already overheated housing market. Loans that would, would sow the seeds for creating an environment of ever-growing defaulted loans. The response to our concerns was that we didn't understand banking and that everything was rosy in the garden. In retrospect, what was really worrying about these meetings was not that we were asking the right questions or that we were proved right subsequently, but, but that IFSRA was not asking these questions and was certainly not in a position to act on questions they were not asking. Another similar meeting at this time was between Trevor Sargent, myself, and the Chief Executive of Bank of Ireland. This meeting was obviously an, an insurance exercise on the part of the bank to preempt the prospect of the Green Party being part of the next government. It was civil enough in itself, uh, but Trevor was later to receive a very angry phone call from the Chief uh, Executive concerned. The reason for the tirade was that we had failed to inform him of our manifesto commitment to reintroduce a bank levy, even though this would have been well known. The irony now, of course, is that subsequent bank levies uh, now exist through legislation on the Bank Guarantee Scheme, on recapitalization, and the imminent uh, NAMA bill. Uh, and that can't be avoided by that bank or that now former chief executive. The litany of bad practice we have since learned about activities within the banking sector has varied from the incompetent to the morally suspect to the frankly illegal. It has indicated a system of regulation that not only has failed to act on its responsibilities, but often chose not to act on those responsibilities at all. This is the essence of where we stand with the lack of any effective regulation of the Irish uh, financial services sector. It hasn't been the lack of resources. It hasn't been the lack of appropriate legislation, although the lack of clarity of the relationship between the central bank and ISRA and the lack of balance between prudential duty and consumer protection hasn't helped. It has been the failure of culture and a deficit that exists in terms of political accountability that has been responsible for the near absence of financial regulation in this country. Whether it has been the overemphasis on profit-based loans uh, with the widespread use of personal guarantees, 
the scale of directors' loans, the avoidance of annual reporting procedures, the use of clients to buy stocks to artificially bolster share prices. We've all become familiar, over-familiar, with the Byzantine world of Irish banking. The twin peaks of incompetence and illegality have been scaled with a frightening regularity. There is a public hunger that prosecution should be made, which I hope will be. But that will be made more difficult because of the failure to regulate up until now. It could be that many of the more shocking revelations have yet to be heard. Anecdotal evidence exists that some lenders link lending to becoming involved directly in development projects, either individually or through a company structure. It seems clear that our major banks were not involved in this activity, but the extent to which it existed at all must be exposed, and the NAMA mechanism must not be used to allow any individual or financial institution to escape responsibility for such activity. Added to, this convention is that the, the, added to this is the convention that the elected political system uh, should not criticize the appointed political system. I was surprised and went ahead uh, of any uh, opposition spokesperson on finance, I first called for the resignation of the chief executive of IFSRA. It could be the culture that where resignation is not expected and is not encouraged in elected public office, that this means that a type of political omerta extends to others in the public service. This is a culture that has to change uh, if we are ever to have confidence to be gained in financial regulation in this country. This hasn't been helped either in the delay in removing the IFSRA chief executive or the over-generous package offered on resignation, which it seems to indicate that no personal responsibility existed. This is what we're now leaving behind. New legislation and new structures that result from it are, are where future financial regulation will exist in this country. The government has announced it intends to establish a new central banking commission. This should repair uh, the rift caused by the 2002-2003 legislation. The new, section, new structure is meant to be more diffuse, having a number of commissioners with particular expertise in specialized areas of financial regulation. It is imperative, though, that at least one of these commissioners uh, not be an Irish national and be, adversed, uh, be versed in international financial systems. A renewed debate about where consumer protection lies is, I'm glad, resolved and must remain part of whatever financial regulatory uh, system is developed. Some recent legislation on corporate governance and director responsibility improves matters, but doesn't, uh, in my opinion, go far enough. This legislation needs to be changed further. There are still too many gray areas that need to be cleared, such as the financial and business relationship with family members and the permitted level and extent of cross-board memberships. A new financial uh, regulator, regulatory system requires not only a, a new system, but a willingness to absorb best international practice. The recent visit to Ireland by Mr. Bo Lundgren, a member of the Swedish cabinet at the time of their banking crisis in the early 90s was revelatory. His comments on that visit showed how a banking crisis can be dealt with and in the short term. It also showed how a better functioning regulatory system can identify problems earlier and provide the information needed to help bring about recovery. Our best learning can be from Canada, which stands alone in not having had a banking crisis, due largely to a system of regulation that is more interventionist and more stringent in the standards that are applied to its banks. We can learn from international practices, but we must also work to ensure that international structures of regulation are in place. This is especially important in the Eurozone area. As a country, we should be influencing the development of these new necessary structures. The era of, of light touch regulation was meant to unleash a period uh, of self-regulation within the industry itself. We have since learned a valuable lesson that many within the financial services sector cannot be, entrust, cannot be trusted to engage with ethical norms of behavior. However, some self-regulation is needed. In a post Lehman Brothers world, we cannot return to the levels of salary payments and bonuses that existed. More openness and transparency is especially needed now in how banks and other financial institutions conduct their businesses. Diversity in investment uh, and to some extent a return to the cautious uh, conservatism that had previously characterized banking is what is needed. To summarize, a bullet point approach to what I believe should be done to change and improve the regulation of financial services should be to recognize that current legislation, while listing appropriate powers that were largely never used, has produced a structure that has undermined effective regulation, and that mistake should not be repeated. We need to ensure that consumer protection has an equal importance with that of the prudential role in our regulatory system. 
uh, we need to bring, out, bring about recruitment procedures and salary levels within this regulator's office needed to be sufficient to counteract any threat from the private sector. We need to end the culture of no blame, no shame. We need to successfully prosecute when breaches of standards are found. We need to construct an international component to our inter internal systems of regulation. We need to learn from and absorb best international practice. We need to influence the establishment of an effective international system of financial regulation. And ultimately, we need to change the ethical culture of banking and to ensure that such a change occurs from within. Thank you.